do a miracle. Let me hear God move without reservation. Ask that your let's see. Ask that you will not hinder my work because of doubt or unbelief. Amen. Let this be your prayer. Let it happen, my children. It will be good in my sight. It will be glorious, my children. Amen. So God watches over his word to perform it. Hallelujah. No word from his mouth will return void. Not one. God is not a man that he should lie. Praise the Lord. So when he says no matter what you've done, we can actually enter into that peace and that rest, yes. knowing that no matter what I've done, God likes me. Yeah. Amen. God loves me, Amen. and if God loves me, I'm okay. Amen. Whether anybody else thinks I'm okay or not. That's right. That's right. Whether I think I'm okay or not. <laughs> the point is, if somebody else is condemning you, and you're condemning yourself, and God has set you free from condemnation, then you're wrong, not Him. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. I like that idea. Because sometimes I feel condemned. Sometimes I feel less than. Sometimes I feel unworthy. Sometimes I feel unworthy. I was going to say sometimes I am unworthy. But actually what the Word says is true. So last week we learned about um, taking our thoughts captive, right? To the Word of God. Today we're going to talk about getting our tongues in control, or taking our words captive. Praise the Lord. Amen. In order to have your thoughts taken captive, sometimes you have to speak words. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't think loud enough to make your thoughts captive, or take your thoughts captive. Sometimes you have to say things in order for your thoughts to line up with the Word of God. Okay. Because if you're, I want you to know that your thoughts are louder than your thoughts. If you're thinking of them. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> your thoughts are louder than your thoughts if you're thinking them. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So if you're thinking a thought and you want to think another thought and you can't think another thought because you're thinking a thought already. <laughs> Am I way off here? No. no. Right Praise the Lord. See, the enemy is, a, and is, is an ancient being. Yes. He's absolutely ancient. Okay? He's been around for a long time, so he's very wise in the ways of evil. He understands what you're going through. He understands the things that make you stumble. He understands, but he is not creative. That's right. No. The enemy is not creative. So the things he has tempted you with, he will keep tempting you with them as long as you are tempted by them. Mm -hmm. He will not change the way he tempts you. He will tempt you over and over and over again until you start thinking different thoughts and start saying different things Amen. and believing different things Amen. that you're thinking. Hallelujah. So if you're thinking the wrong thoughts today, who all here thinks you may be wrong? <laughs> Come on. Okay. If you may be wrong and you are absolutely convinced and you have some opinions and you have some opinions and you got some opinions, those opinions just might be wrong. Come on. That's right. right. Well, what if I thought them for a long time and I'm actually these are my these are my axioms for my life. If they're not right in the Word of God, they're not right. That's right. And if you don't repent of that, what you do are, are walking in pride. And God resists the proud. Yes, he does. So if you want to be resisted by God, keep thinking thoughts and opinions that aren't about him. Or about the way he thinks. We are able to, by our words, we are able to fix the broken, mend the torn, give goodies to children, heal the sick. Give hope to the hopeless, victory to the discouraged, sight to the blind, direction to the wandering, rescue for the floundering. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> His name is above every name. Mm -hmm. Now some of us, in our, in our thoughts and stuff like that, we think we're so right. We think we're walking in compassion. I want you to know if you're worried about somebody, or so concerned about them, you've made yourself sick, you're not walking in compassion. Right. You're walking in worry. Now, Jesus was moved by compassion. He was moved by love for people. He had drastic empathy for, for people. He did. But when he talked to people, he didn't say like, Dude, I know what you're going through, man. 
How bad is it? What does the doctor say? Uh, you know, how are how is how are your finances? Or about yourself, you know? Oh, I don't think I'm ever going to make. It. I think I'm always going to be like this. I think you know I can't change. I'm I'm German after all. <laughs> I'm a Pisces. Well, I used to be a Pisces. Now I'm a Christian. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not. I'm not directed by the stars. That's right. I'm directed by the one who breathed the stars yeah. into existence. Yeah. Hallelujah. And he's given us his word. He's given us his word. Actually, this Bible that you read is so, is so accurate. It's been around forever. And it's, they, when they found the Dead Sea Scrolls in 1968, they went back and they found Isaiah word for word in the Dead Sea Scrolls two, two, two three thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, word for word. So the Bible has been. You got to work, read a, a book by. I think his name is F. F. Bruce. It's the New Testament documents. Are they reliable? You need to look it up. If you don't think the Bible is reliable, man, it is the most reliable book on the face of the earth. If you've never watched that show by uh, what, what's his name, Case for Christ, oh, Strobel, yeah, Strobel, Lee Strobel. I don't know what it's called. Case for Christ, see? I'm right on it. Oh, Case for Christ. So if you've never watched that movie, go watch it. And it, it, it just shows that he took about himself to prove that Jesus Christ never rose from the dead. That's right. Prove that the Gospels were wrong. He went about to prove yes. it wrong. Everyone, honestly, who's ever went about to prove the Bible yes. wrong or the things of God wrong have ended up being saved. That's right. Because you, all you do is prove him right. Mm -hmm. It's really neat because if we're absolutely honest with ourselves, I know a lot of scientists and scientists when they become honest mm -hmm. they think the thing, same thoughts as you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Where do we come from? Where are we going when we die? And why are we here? Right. Those are the thoughts of the most brainy people on the face of the earth. They're still thinking those things. Either they will choose if we came from a big bang that came from something smaller than a proton and turned into people. <laughs> that, even when I was a kid, going to school and they taught me that, I could not get it. I could not get it. If there's a design, there has to be a designer. I'm a guy who, when I, have, when I go to build something, I gotta draw a picture of it. If it's a dog house, if it's a high rise building, I have to have some plans. And if there's a design, there has got to be a designer. If I just went out there and threw a bunch of lumber out in the yard and, and waited, right. but wait long enough, that baby will turn to dust. Right. If I left my house just the way it is, in a hundred years, it'd be all broken down and caved in and screwed up. Yes. The second law of thermodynamics says everything goes from order to chaos, mm -hmm. not the other way around. That's right. So when God spoke things into existence, he spoke it in perfectly. And since then, <laughs> we, we tend to make things. Okay, all right. So, if we're moved with empathy and compassion, but we have failed to move in faith, we see that Jesus moved with compassion. Uh, and when he was moved with compassion, the dead were raised, the lame walked, the hopeless heard words of life, fevers were cooled, and the cold of heart were set on fire. He emphasizes with our pain, but he agrees with God about our condition. So what are you agreeing with? What are you speaking about yourself? What are you speaking about other people? Okay? Amos 3.3 3 says, Can two walk together unless they are agreed? So when you wake up in the morning, what do you say about yourself? I've got a list of things here. I got them out of a book I was reading. And it's called, Let My Never Again List. My Never Again List. This guy wrote them. And he reads them every day. He says, mm -hmm. one of them is, I'll never again confess that I can't, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. Never again will I confess lack, for my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And on he goes with these. And I'll give you one of these each. I got 30 of them. Maybe I won't give you one each. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, faith is built by words. Deeds are the children of words, mostly. Well, I'd rather see somebody live the gospel of Christ than ever speak a word. The reason there's 
live in the gospel of Christ is because they spoke a word. Because you can't even be saved unless you spoke That's a right. word. That's right. That's right. They believed in their heart, confessed with their mouth, yes. and they were born again. If you've never confessed with your mouth that you were born again, then you're not. That's right. Well, what about people who can't hear or talk? The deaf heard Jesus, and the mute spoke. If you find someone that can't talk, get them fixed. I, I'm done making excuses for my lack of power. I'm done making excuses for my lack of integrity. I'm done making excuses for my lack of uh, kindness. I'm done making excuses for my lack of love. I'm done making excuses. If it has to do with sin, I need to repent. Yes. If it has to do with some thought I'm having that isn't from God, I need to get rid of that thought. Yes. I need to take that thought captive and speak into myself something else. I'm done making excuses. If the Bible says it's true, I believe it's true. That's right. right. I woke up this morning, my shoulder hurts so bad, I can't hardly function, right? But I just kept saying, you know, the Word says I'm healed. That's right. I don't care if I die with shoulder pain. I want you to know, devil, you're a liar. I buy, buy the stripes of Christ. I'm healed. Amen. Simple as that. Doesn't make any difference to me. But I'm looking for miracles. Yes. And if the Amen. word this year is miracles, hey, come on. Amen. I'm ready for a couple of those babies. Ooh. Praise the Lord. So, first you think it, then you say it, then you do it. Okay. Words last and they bring a return of blessing or curse. The word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. I want you to know that Jesus wrote those, they wrote that about Jesus like a couple thousand years ago. Just think a couple thousand years. The United States has been in existence for 300 years, right? 1976, 2000, 2000 200, whatever. 17, 18, 19. Yeah, two, two something. <laughs> My math isn't that well this morning, so forgive me. Okay. When a loved one is in trouble, or you're in trouble, I'll run, run through that. Oh, you poor thing. I've been there, dude. How bad is it? I can't seem to get my act together. Everything is falling apart around me. I may not come out of this one. You ever say that about yourself? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, time ago. Yeah. it's just falling apart. My <laughs> life's just falling apart. <laughs> if it is, then you're agreeing with the wrong guy. Yeah. That's right. Okay, praise the Lord. Enoch walked with God and he was not. Why? Because Enoch pleased the Lord. Amen. How did Enoch please the Lord? He believed God. It is in chapter 11 of Hebrews and it's Genesis 5, 24, something like that. Enoch walked with God. And it says later in Genesis, it says Enoch pleased the Lord. And it says in Hebrews that Enoch pleased the Lord and he was not. But without faith... No one can please the Lord. So Enoch walked by faith. He said what God said. He did what God did. And he walked with the Lord. If Enoch did it, folks, mm -hmm. hallelujah, if one guy did it, if one guy did it, Jesus said himself, he says, greater things yes. that you, sh you shall do because I'm going to the Father. Right. If Amen. Jesus said I can, then I can. Right. Hallelujah. Not that, I, not that I even may. I can. Mm -hmm. I and Jesus says, you may. You get the difference? Yes. One you can, one you may. Okay? Not that you can't. <laughs> hallelujah. Instead of agreeing with the wicked, lying, treacherous devil. Hallelujah. Okay. Psalm 1821 says, what does it say? <laughs> Death and life are in power of God and you will eat by the food of it. That's, okay. That's Proverbs. Yeah. What did I say? Okay, Proverbs 18:21. Okay, now in the message that this is this is how it says this: words kill, words give life. They are either poison or fruit. You choose. That was that's big for me, cause I'm a talky guy. Didn't used to be a talky guy, but I'm a talky guy. And sometimes things spring out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> that I have to repent for afterwards. And I'd rather to obey is better than sacrifice. Yeah. To say the right thing first or to just shut up. Yeah. Instead of saying the wrong thing is a better way to live. 
Last night, I, I will not tell you what I went through last night, but I had to repent all the way out to my truck, all the way out to the deal, all the way back to my truck, and when I came in, I told Regina, I said, I'm sure glad doesn't, God doesn't hold things against me like I do against other people. <laughs> because I remembered what this person had put me through. I remembered what his lifestyle was for the last seven years. I remember all of those things, and so I, I, I just... What an idiot. And I just came in all... <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a creep, you're right. <laughs> Regina's, she, Regina's like that with a big smile going, ah, praise the Lord. I love it when you're wrong, man. <laughs> no, she wasn't thinking that. All right. So it says again in Amos 3.3, how can two walk together unless they are agreed? We need to choose our words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yeah. They'll either bring fruit or they will bring a curse. It's really true. You can speak curses on kids. I know some of you in this place are still functioning or have functioned by the curses your parents put upon you when you were just a child. That's right. Words last. Words last unless you are redeemed. Yeah, right. You can't get rid of those things. Those curses remain with you for your whole life. Okay? Oh, in Malachi 2. Let's go there just for a second. I was reading this this morning. I thought, whoa, that's pretty good. I like the Word of God because it's so true, and I like believing that it's true, otherwise God can't be trusted. So in Malachi, the second chapter, the 17th verse, it says, the Lord is talking to the children of Israel. He says, you have wearied the Lord with your words, yet you say, in what way have we wearied you? And that you say, everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delights in them. Or where is the God of justice? And on and on we accuse God. Well, God, why has this happened to me? I've confessed the word over and over. What's going on here? Come on, come on, come on. Why am I living like that's such a pig? <laughs> so jump over here to the uh, third chapter, the 13th verse. And it says, oh, this is good. Your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Oh. Your words have been harsh against me. And you say, what have we spoken against you? You have said it's useful to, it's useless to serve God. What profit is there? I have kept my or his ordinances, and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts. So now, so now we call the proud blessed, and those who do wickedness are raised up. They even tempt God and go free. <laughs> Listen to this. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him. And those who fear the Lord and who meditate in his name, they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On the day that I make them my jewels, I will spare them and as a man spares his own son who serves them. Woo! Why? Just because they said the right thing about God. Just because they spoke to one another. Why do you think in the New Testament it says, speak to one another in psalms, hymns, yeah. and spiritual songs, right. making melody in your heart mm -hmm. to the Lord. Mm -hmm. it's that if things are good, true, praiseworthy, think oh, about these cool. things. God says, think about things and speak about things that are true and good and right. Quit. Cynicism is not okay. That's right. Sarcasm is not okay. That's right. Get your wit to a place where it brings Hope to people and That's right good. to people and good to people rather than bringing somebody down just to yes. make you look good. Good word. Yeah, it is good word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. So your words have been stout against me. The other word for harsh is stout. Your words have been stout against me. Well, I'm just, I'm just broke. I think I'm going to die broke. Those are harsh words against God. Because the Lord says, He shall supply all your needs. Amen. Right. By His riches and glory, by Christ Jesus. Well, um, okay. <laughs> Excuse me, Matt. Can I testify right now? Okay. I'm so sorry. It's just really on the way you just speaking. Um, on December 12th, I got a whole new shoulder put in. Father God, God's will. And on the 24th, David, for Christmas, I got my stitches pulled. Wow. I have almost full movement now. 
Hallelujah. I will, I'm still wearing this because the doctor's orders and mostly because people tend not to run into me as much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, I can't do it. <laughs> uh, Deacon Lord and your thoughts, like you've been speaking, I have of teen uh, cases already in this time where <clears throat> this morning was the best one. I got up and I had pain and didn't and ask for the Lord. I asked the Lord in my mind the first time, please just take this away. I know you do it to me already. You're already doing yeah. it twice as fast as yeah. anybody else. And um, I Get dressed is pretty painful for me. Put my arms through the sleeves and not have to throw it over. But I've been able to do that. And it would hurt this morning, so I finally said, you, Guess you didn't hear me, Lord. And I did it all loud. I said, oh, I'm hurting and I don't want to touch some pain pills still. And it, it, it wasn't five minutes, I didn't finish getting my hair brushed out. And it was gone. It was right there. And it has to look. That's Thank awesome. you. Okay. I don't want to add on to that. Tina would talk to the sword in the garden. If you have the garden. And that's how he got all of, a lot of his information. We have Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have the Lord. We talk to him. That's, that's right. how we get right. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, um, mm. this a, a book I was reading this week about a guy. He, he had these terrible headaches, he had these terrible headaches, and he was speaking healing over everybody else. He was ministering in the power of God, and the, and the headaches were so bad he couldn't stand it. So he went before the Lord, got on his face, says, Lord, what's up? I've confessed your word, I believed your word. He says, yeah, but you're self-sufficient. Mm. Oh, wow. So he's been walking in pride. Mm. And so mm. we need to walk humbly yes. before the Lord. Get to a place where, when you're absolutely dependent upon Him, when God is all you have left, God is enough. Yeah. Yeah. We got to watch ourselves from getting getting arrogant yeah. or puffed up or even self-sufficient because right. we are Americans after all. <laughs> <laughs> and we live in Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> hey, who is more self-sufficient than Nevada's, you know? <laughs> Nevada's live in America. Praise the Lord. So, anyway. So in Romans, the 10th chapter, the 8th verse, it says, But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. Ooh, that's so good. Did you say that was in Romans uh, 10, 8. Okay. I'll wait. You guys like to read it. It's, you know, it's a good thing, because I haven't lied to you. <laughs> you might quote it wrong. Okay. What does it say? Quote, the word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith, yes. which we preach. Mm -hmm. In our heart and in our mouth. And if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Amen. In 2 Corinthians 4.13, it says... Um, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we speak. We believe, therefore we speak. If we just believe, the devil believes. Yes. He trembles. Unless we do something with our belief, unless yeah. we do with something with our faith, it doesn't come alive. It has to have action with it. And a lot of the action is you saying what it says about you rather than what you feel, rather than your circumstances, rather than what the other pe person is making you mad. By the way, nobody can make you mad. Come on. That's right. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> faith demands that we take action before God takes action. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mental assent is not action. Believing is not action, like right. I said before. In Romans 10.10 10, it says, we cannot even be saved without confession. Praise the Lord. So, in Colossians 2.10 it says, You are complete in Him. Or ye are complete in Him, you King James people. Praise the Lord. So, when you wake up in the morning and you don't feel very complete, you can say, I am complete 
in my spirit right now. I have partaken of God's divine nature. I can stand in His presence without shame or guilt. I am equal to any task He sets before me today because I depend on Him. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for these good works. He has stuff for me to do, and I am up to the task. Praise the Lord. You don't need to experience anything. You don't have to have any experience, any symptoms, any feelings at all for you to be able to speak the Word of God. If you're feeling angry and you speak kindness, I want you to know people will think you're kind. Although, when you speak kindness kindly, it's better. <laughs> but instead of speaking our anger, we can speak our kindness, okay? We don't need to an experience or a feeling or a symptom. You just agree with God. Many times, in spite of your feelings or your experience or your circumstances, you speak the Word of God rather than what you're feeling, experiencing, or going through. I am complete in Him. What is faith to you is fact to Him. If He said it's already fact to God, when He says, by His stripes you are healed, he didn't say, by his stripes you're going to be healed. That's right. Or you are being healed. He says, by his stripes you are healed. So what you do when you speak that, you're agreeing with God. Yes. And when did he heal you? Thank you. 2,000 years ago, that's when he did it. When he went through the whipping, when he went through the mocking, when he went through the cross, when he went through all that pain and stuff, it was back then that he did everything for you that he was going to do for you. What he's doing now... When you speak it, he's bringing forth the grace he's already given you. Yeah. He's not doing stuff, he's already done it. <laughs> the cross is a complete work. In yeah. Psalm 27, 1 it says, The Lord is the strength of my life. Mm -hmm. That is really hard for... <clears throat> it's really hard for a guy who's worked all his life. You know, I, you know, I used to glory in my flesh all the time. I'm telling you, man. I used to be young. No, I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> I can't do what I used to do. I wish I could, but I can't. Praise the Lord. And I'm glad. Because if I was still that strong, I probably wouldn't be this dependent on God. Right. <laughs> you know? When I needed something, I'd just go, you know, work twice as hard. In 1 Corinthians 1.30, again, we come back to righteousness. It says, He has become unto us wisdom from God, righteousness, and sanctification. So through Christ, you are sanctified, you are righteous. His holiness, His mind, His righteousness, not yours. You feeling bad today? You feeling a little unrighteous today? Well, the Bible says, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. He is your righteousness. He has become your righteousness. In believing this and express, expressing it through your mouth, you begin to believe and you begin to act the way you say. If you keep saying, oh, I'm just a sinner... I'm just a sinner. You know, God's grace is good and His mercy is good, but I'm just a sinner. You keep saying that, that's what you will become. Yep. That's what you will stay. Yes. But I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Virginia's been doing that. I am the righteousness of God. And, and you know, she walks around. She doesn't even argue with me anymore. <laughs> it, yeah, you can't even get a rise, you know. Just, just the word of God pops out of her mouth. How do you fight? How do you fight? She's not fair. And why is it like that? Because she's decided that she is the righteousness of Christ. The righteousness of God in Christ. Okay. That's why when we get baptized in the Holy Ghost, we don't get sprinkled in the Holy Ghost. That's right. We don't get dipped in the Holy Ghost. We get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yes. You know what baptized means? Yes. It means you're soaking wet. When we baptize people, we don't like to hold anything out. No. <laughs> I'm serious. When the people, they want to keep their hand out or something, or their head or something. No, I just shove them in, man. Because <laughs> I want, I want the, the physical act of being baptized yes. the same as the spiritual act of being yes. baptized. When God baptized me in his spirit, he baptized all of me. That's, That's right. right. Amen. He made my body his throne. Yes. Amen. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. I hope that's not pride. Yeah. So in Romans, I mean in 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, We are the righteousness of God. In fact, somebody read that. I'm right there. I'll read it. 5.21. It says, 
For he made him, Jesus Christ, yes. who knew no sin, yes. to be sin for us. Mm -hmm. Why? That we might become the righteousness of God in him. So make your confession. Make your confession right. That we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. In Romans 9. Oh, I like this one too. I got to read this one because I'm not going to quote it wrong. Romans 9, 30. 930 says, what should we say then? That the Gentiles did not pursue righteousness, having attained to righteousness, even the righteousness of faith. How does that work? But Israel, pursuing the law of righteousness, did not attain to the law of righteousness. Why? Because they did not seek it by faith, but as it were, by the works of the law. For they stumbled at the stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. You been feeling shame lately? Well, okay, my body is the throne of God. In Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. And I live no longer. Amen. <laughs> I can't get that. That's a bit out there for me. Holy cow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In this I life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Amen. Who loved me and gave himself for me. And if righteousness comes through the law, and Christ died for nothing. Right. If righteousness comes by your works, then you're in a wrong room. <laughs> Hallelujah. Righteousness does not come by works. Works come by righteousness. That's right. Works come when you believe and begin to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that you are the righteousness of God. Then you can become and begin to act righteously. Come on. That's right. But what about my opinions? <laughs> <laughs> but what about all the stuff I've done? Okay. In Romans 4, go back a couple pages. I want to read this too because it's so good. Romans 4, we're going to read a couple pas passages here. We'll read 3 through 8 first. It says, And what does the Scripture say? Talking about Abraham, believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man whom God imputes righteousness <coughs> apart from works. Imputes. Imputes. Get that? He puts it in you. He puts it in you. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Lord. Now go down to 16 and 17. It says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace. So that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Listen to this. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things that do not exist as though they already did. What is he talking about? He's talking about righteousness. He's talking about the son that Abraham was going to get. He said right here, the word he was standing on, I have made you a father of many nations. Now, I'm going to read a little more there. Abraham, who, contrary to hope, in hope believed. If your hope has ran out, go contrary to your hope. <laughs> okay, let's go on here. Okay. Who, contrary to hope, in hope, believed, so that he became the father of many nations. According to the word that was spoken, so shall your descendants be. Five words. So shall your descendants be. <coughs> what has God spoken over you? Read this book. You'll find out what God has spoken over yes. you, and you begin to get excited about the book, because I want to see miracles this year. I want to see miracles. Until we get this thing down, our, what does this have to do with spiritual warfare? Everything. Amen. If you don't know who you are in Christ, if you are not convinced that you are the righteousness of God, you will have no power over the enemy because you'll think he's more powerful than you are. Oh, Lord have mercy. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Because I feel real good today and my body doesn't ache or I'm, I'm really feeling good and my toe doesn't hurt today. So I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. I will yes. rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. That's right. Okay, you can say that in the morning. I choose to love rather than fear. Amen. I am a love giver, giver rather than a love seeker. Mm. That's a big in it. That's good. We yeah. can talk to a lot of people who are love seekers. Yes. And all they would have to do is change their attitude and begin become right. love givers. That's right. Mm. I am loved by God, and when He loves me, I can love other people. Amen. Yeah, I can even love myself. In Psalm 34, 1, it says, Oh, bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. 1 John 4, 4 says, he, Greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. Romans 8, 31, If God be for us, be woo! 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. God loved me so I can love me too. And I'm able to love my neighbor at the same time. Revelation 12, 11 says, And they overcame him by the word of their testimony. By the word of their testimony, they said things. He talks about the future just like it was the past. And there, the revelation, he talks about us in the future. <laughs> he talks about it like it's already happened. Because for him, God is God. You know, he, he's very cool. Okay. And they overcame him. You go preach some more? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> and you want to experience up Romans 9 there, 23, 24, 25. Now it was not written by his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, mm -hmm. who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Amen. Okay. Now, to finish up Romans 4, in 19, it says, And not being weak in faith, Abraham, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't even consider his weakness. Okay? He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised he was able to perform. And therefore it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his uh, sake only that this was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and raised because of our justification. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into this grace. Woo! Hallelujah. Not bad words, huh? If you weren't read those words over and over, just, just those words, just those seven verses. If you read those over and over every day, you, you'd be a, a radical person. Just a radical person. <laughs> Why? Because you actually begin to believe it. You believe things right now because you said them over and over to yourself. Mm -hmm. Some things are wrong, some things are right. Mm -hmm. But you're functioning today by what you believe. Well, it's just the way I was raised. Well, get on re raised or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hebrews 11. I like Hebrews 11, it talks about faith a lot. He has been teaching on faith on Wednesday night, so. Mm -hmm. And I was going to get away from this, but I just could not get away from this. I was trying. Talking about Abraham again. In 11 through 13 it says, By faith Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Why was she able to bear a child? Because she judged him faithful and he who had promised. Okay. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sands is to the seashore. <laughs> now listen to this. 
These all died in faith, not having received the promises. Well, that sucks. I'll believe in these promises and I die. Well, what? Listen to this. They all died, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Oh, hallelujah. They were searching for something other than here. There's a story about some missionaries. Went on a mission for 30 years. Came back. They went when they were about 30. Now they're 60-something, pretty old. They come back, and they see this huge party. Everybody's got hats, and they're blowing horns and drumming drums, and they're all excited. And I thought, oh, they're, they're, they're inviting us back home. And they got all excited. But down the ramp walked this uh, senator or some guy. And so they were doing it all for him. And not one person was there for them. And he kind of got bummed out. He said, that guy for that guy, he's only been in office for two months, you know. And they have a big party for him. We've been off 30 years serving the Lord. Nothing. His wife comes over, he's passing, he says, sweetheart, we're not done yet. That's right. When you get home, I want you to know this. There's something about eternity. When you get home, there's going to be some rejoicing going on. There's going to be some partying happening. You know, Jesus hasn't drank wine for a couple thousand years. Before that, he drank it every day. He hasn't drank wine for 2,000 years. Can you imagine how thirsty he is? He's going to get better. Wait till he gets a little me. He's going to raise that glass. I'm telling you, we are going to get liquored in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah! No wonder we quit here. You're not drunk with wine here, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's a drink. That's a drink that cannot be measured. That's a drink that cannot be. I mean, we begin to drink the new wine of the Lord when He raises that wine. We'll get so stoned we won't be able to function, falling down, going, "Good Jesus is the Lord, my God!" Look at that. You know. Anyway. <laughs> With no hangover. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> okay, so we are home yet. Yeah. <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote down here, if you can't think it, read it out loud. If you can't think it or quote it, read it out loud. Do you think ministers just say, carry four by five cards in your, your pocket for nothing? I bet if I asked in this group, probably, I don't know, 10% has ever carried a four by five mm. card in your pocket. Yes. But everybody's heard that. Yes. Anyway, if you can't think it, read it. Isaiah 53 5 says, He was wounded for our transgression, <laughs> He was bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and by His stripes we are healed. If you have no peace today, God gives you peace. Yes. If you have no peace tomorrow morning, you begin to quote that verse. It says, you were bruised for my iniquities. And the chastisement of my peace is upon you. So, Lord, I need peace today. I need your peace today. You give peace. Amen. You give peace. Not like the world. You That's give awesome. peace. And so, I, Lord, I claim that peace today. I thank you for your Amen. peace. So, I already answered that question. What if, the, what, if the, uh, what if they can't speak it? The deaf heard his voice. The dumb spoke. When they heard him, <laughs> the lame and the broken leaped. He spoke words of faith, with faith, with interest, with love, and with compassion. You know, sometimes we'll just quote the word, and by his stripes we're healed. Mm -hmm. That's good, I guess, you know. By his stripes we are. By his stripes I am. In the name of Jesus, be yes. Amen. When you pray something, don't put a little passion. That's why. Right. Anyway, you know you gotta mean it, Matt. You know, we, absolutely. It says, you know, if you listen to Jesus and really what He prayed, and, and we listen to a lot of us praying for each other, we do these twenty minute yeah. healing each other's ass prayer. Yeah. What did Jesus say? Right. Pick up your mat, be healed. Yeah. By your faith, you are healed. Yes. Amen. And then we, you know, you know, it didn't take him no twenty minutes, no half hour, That's right. no talking to this way. Right. You know, be healed. You mean it, receive it. Yeah. Walk in. And and when you're speaking to somebody, speak with kindness. Yeah. Speak with compassion. Yes. Be half yeah. interested. Yeah. 
be interested enough to speak faith over. I'm going to read you a little story. Um, this is a story about uh, Johnny Lake, who's 15 years old, a Christian kid. Um, okay, he immigrated to Canada from Ireland. He was an atheist. He suffered a painful rheumatic hip for years. This is Dr. Riley did. Okay, Dr. Riley took a liking to young Johnny Lake. He often took Johnny along with him to house calls. One night, they were at a home in the Owens family where a seven-year-old Kathy Owens was stricken with double pneumonia. Dr. Riley listened to the girl, gasping for every breath, and finally closed his black bag. <coughs> Turning to Kathy's parents, this atheist, Dr. Riley, said, sadly, I'm sorry, Kathy won't make it through the night. I must leave now, make other calls, but I'll return. Meanwhile, I'll leave Johnny here to sit by Kathy while she dies. Wow. After that, Dr. Riley left the house, Johnny got down on his knees so he could speak softly in Kathy's ear. God loves you. Kathy, God is going to heal you. Johnny whispered, breathe, Kathy, breathe. Oh, God, help Kathy breathe. Johnny continued, Kathy, soon it will be spring. We'll go out to the lawn. We'll make, pick buttercups and daisies. And Breathe, Kathy, breathe. Oh, God, help Kathy to breathe. Then Kathy will look down the gopher hole and maybe we'll see a gopher, uh, gopher fairy. <laughs> breathe, Kathy, breathe. God loves you. Oh, God, help Kathy breathe. <coughs> then Kathy will go to the bridge and watch the minnows in the river below the wagons go rolling across the bridge. Breathe, Kathy, breathe. Thank you, God. You are helping Kathy to breathe. About two hours passed before Dr. Riley can turn, return to the Owens home. By this time, Johnny wasn't speaking in a whisper. <laughs> but with vigor and excitement. How, how long has it been going on? Dr. Riley asked Kathy's parents. Ever since you left, doctor, they replied. There were times we thought Kathy was drawing her last breath, but now it seems she's getting stronger. Dr. Riley took his stethoscope, bent down, and examined Kathy. He didn't say a word, but a slow smile spread across his face. Johnny jumped up and explained, God has healed Kathy. Gosh, sir, gosh, sir, isn't God wonderful? Dr. R R Riley responded as he raised himself to his full height, placing his hand on his afflicted hip. He spoke the name of the one who he had hated so long. Yes, Johnny, God is wonderful. At that very moment, the severe pain departed from Dr. Riley's hip. Right on. Kathy Owens was miraculously healed of double pneumonia. Dr. Riley was totally healed of pneumatic hip disease. And best of all, Dr. Riley became a breather, a believer in Jesus Christ, all because somebody spoke a word of faith over a girl. Amen. Isn't that cool? Yes. So sometimes you just need to keep saying stuff until it happens. Yeah. Amen. But what if it never happens? What if it does? Come on, that's right. <laughs> what if it does? Are you willing? To do it if it does. You won't know if you don't. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you'll never know. And you know, God is so real. He's so wonderful. He's so good. Um, um, I'll, I've got to read this. Hebrews 13. And this is a good one because we've got to watch ourselves. 5 and 6 says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can men do to me? Amen. Hallelujah. First Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes I am healed. What is faith to you is fact to God. And Mark 11.23 says, whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. So, Lord, we have brought our thoughts into subjection to you. We brought our thoughts into the obedience of Jesus Christ. And now, Lord, we're bringing our words into agreement with you. And this week, Lord, we are excited about what you're going to do this next year. We're, 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 we're absolutely convinced that you are the King of glory. And you are coming soon. We thank you, Lord, for the miracles of this year in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Before I pass these out, Lord, I thank you for allowing us to give today.
Thank you, Lord, for letting us uh, realize who you are and what you're doing. We pray, Lord, right now, and I thank you for the abundance you put on us. Yes. In this city, I thank you for sending prosperity to Fernie, Nevada, because you've done it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here's some information. Okay. I'm going to pass these around. These are my never again list. If you don't agree with it, don't read it. Right. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to take this on books or not. But. It's kind of cool. I think that's how it's cool. Huh? You do? What book? Oh, yeah? That's a great book. Is that right? For you. Way to go. I like that idea. Oh, okay. How are you doing, man? It's Pretty good to good. see you. It is, it is. Could you pass that down here? or declarations or anything like that and there's hundreds of them yes hundreds of confessions that people say uh, Joyce Myers confesses over her life every day uh, uh, Billy Graham mm -hmm. used to confess over his life every day uh, uh, what are some other guys Joe Namath no not <laughs> I don't know yeah anyway every guy that ever has done anything for God has confessed things over his life every day the same thing every day. Well, they might add or subtract it, to, but they do confess things over there. Why? Because it's just like you and me. And just people. Amen. Just people who decided to do it for real. And there's that one song that says, I don't want to go through the motion. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, God bless you guys. We're going to, tonight is the fifth Sunday of the year. What? Monday. No, that's <laughs> Fifth Sunday. This is there's five Sundays in this month. So therefore, the Baptist Church has a fifth Sunday sing, and we're going to go over to the Baptist Church and, and do that. And maybe we'll light candles. I don't know what they're doing. But I'm not staying up till midnight. So. Oh, by the way, they're going to get there at six o'clock. Oh, not tonight. Okay, they're going to get there at six o'clock instead of seven. So six o'clock tonight, so we can go home a little earlier. So God bless you. Have, have a good day. Two 